Good Monday morning. As we come to 2 Samuel 7, we come to the theological center of the book. Over the last few chapters, we've seen the Lord establish his rule and the kingdom of his anointed David. The Lord has a different message for David uh, that's given through Nathan. The message begins with, go and tell my servant David. This is already notable because God didn't call many people his servant up to that point. Previously, only Abraham, Moses, and Caleb have been called his servant by name. Now we see the king, the Lord's anointed, will be the servant of the Lord. But God has a question for David. Are you the one who should build me a house? This isn't a rejection of building a house as seen in verse 13. This is a rejection of David as the one who builds it. God reminds David of what he's done for David and what he will do for David. God reminds David that he took him from following sheep, made him prince over the people. God has been with David everywhere he's gone, and he has cut off all of David's enemies. In verse 9, God declares that he will make David's name great, paralleling the promise to Abraham that his name would be great. Further, a promise is made about the reign of the anointed. The Lord will provide a place for his people where they can be planted. Wicked people will no longer oppress them. This promise of planting God's people, it goes all the way back to the words of Moses in Exodus chapter 15. God is promising a future security and rest. God will plant his people securely and give them rest. This means that though God has given David rest from his enemies, the full promise of rest and security had not been achieved yet. David seems to think that the kingdom has arrived, but God is making promises which reveal that he has far more in mind about what he's going to do in the future. The end of verse 11 is kind of a turning point of God's response. It's the longest speech the Lord makes in Scripture since Mount Sinai. David says that he wants to build a house for the Lord, but the Lord says he's going to build a house for David. God has a purpose that will go far beyond David. The life of David will not be the termination of God's plan. When Saul died, his house was exterminated. But when David dies, this isn't going to happen. The Lord will raise up David's offspring and the Lord will establish his kingdom, a kingdom that will never be destroyed. He'll build a house for the name of the Lord and the throne of his kingdom will be established forever. A beautiful picture of the intimate relationship God will have with the king is seen in verse 14. I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. David's offspring will be God's son. This promise that God makes to David culminates when Mary is pregnant with the Christ. The angel refers to the words of this prophecy to explain what Jesus will do. Jesus is directly connected to the throne of David and the rule of his kingdom having no end. Jesus himself refers to this text when he makes the offer for the weary to come to him and he'll give them rest. Jesus went around in his teaching declaring that God did not care about physical buildings. Jesus declared the destruction of the Lord's temple, but access to the Father would come through him instead. Verse 12 tells us that it will be an offspring of David that will come, and he will build a house for the name of the Lord. Certainly we see Solomon building a physical temple to the Lord, but Jesus comes along and fulfills this prophecy in a much bigger way, as he would be the place where the Lord is accessed. Jesus said that no one can come to the Father except through me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are my God and my shepherd, my provider and my sanctifier. Thank you that you are the Lord of hosts who made heaven and earth by the power of your might and that you chose me to be your child, a member of Christ's body. Thank you for the lessons we learn through the life of David, whom you chose to be Israel's greatest king. Thank you that you can use anyone whose heart is right before you. Cleanse my heart. Use me 
for the advancing of your kingdom. Help me to listen to your voice and obey your word. This I ask in the holy name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.